Hello and welcome to Teacher Learning Cast, episode number 28. Today is February 2nd, 2019. We're back in it. My name is Benjamin Stewart, calling from beautiful Aguascalientes, Mexico. Good morning. Good morning, Benjamin. It's nice to see you again after a long time, not seeing us through Hangouts as we used to do. This is February now. Uh, it's been a year since we started this idea. Uh, it's almost a year, but we are in episode 28 and... Uh, we thank everybody that has been asking if we were coming back and um, and, and asking when are we when, when were we coming back to do the transmissions. But here we are now to talk about education and a little bit about language learning. Absolutely, it's been about six weeks since uh, I think since the last time we had a broadcast, and so right. it is great to be back. And uh, we've been talking a lot, Petey, about the new courses as we often do, starting a new semester. Um, I think uh, courses, the extension courses at the University, Auto the Universidad Autónoma de Aguascalientes, they're starting up, I think, next week. So I think a lot of teachers are starting new classes, maybe starting new opportunities. And uh, this, I think, would be a good time for us to share some of our thoughts about uh, what courses we're teaching this semester and some approaches and workflows that we're thinking about. So that's that's on the agenda for today. But before we start, I'd like to invite everyone, if you wanna participate in today's conversation, to join us in Facebook. We have a Facebook page, Teacher Learning Cast. Join us, leave some comments, let us know what you think. Uh, a lot of you join uh, in on the conversations during the broadcast, which is great. I know PD is fielding some of those questions. So shoot your questions out. Uh, let us know, give us some feedback about uh, any of the topics that we talk about. And uh, we always want to bring in uh, outside perspectives into the conversation. This is not just about Pity and I uh, talking about what what uh, is, is of interest for us, but it's really trying to start the conversation, start a more broader conversation with others and uh, with the hopes that, that others are uh, brought in as well. If you ever want to be part of the live broadcast, that's uh, great. We're always looking for uh, people to uh, either interview or just casually be part of the conversation. Uh, that's also great. If you just want to pop in and out, that's wonderful. Just let us know. We'll be happy to provide you that link before any of our broadcasts, which typically occur every Saturday morning. And, and also, Ben, invite, inviting people, if uh, just for the sake of listening and trying to practice a little bit your English, uh, it's also something that we would like you to do. Nos gustaría que practicaras tu inglés. <laughs> so you can join us just to listen to us a little bit. And I think we have a nice combination with this talk in the sense that uh, Ben, as a native speaker, me, me as a native speaker, and me as a Mexican speaker, uh, a speaker of English, of course. And um, and I think it's a nice combination in which you can uh, detect different. Uh, things and aspects of the language just for the sake of practicing. So join us. And uh, and yes, indeed, uh, we already started classes this week and many teachers are starting classes this coming week. And um, oh, I think mm, I've always known since I was studying uh, my my BA studies here at the Universidad Autónoma de Aguascalientes, I've always known that uh, it's really important to share with people and I've always uh, liked the idea of having people from the outside sharing with you in the classroom. But uh, it's until this past months that I've been really into it as a natural way, receiving people in the classroom, talking to people about what's happening in the classroom. And it's always um, helpful to listen to what other people have to say about what we say. What I mean is, rephrase, paraphrase what, what we are saying or ask questions or whatever is necessary just to raise awareness. Absolutely. We, we view everyone having a voice and regardless of your, your background, your English level, uh, your English proficiency, uh, it's really just communicating and opening up the, the conversation. And so this is really a, a space that we enjoy uh, creating, not only for ourselves, but hopefully for others. And we've had many occasions where we've had uh, conversations with our students who have been brought into the experience 
and um, it's it's all good. So we want to extend the the invitation. It's an open invitation. If you're if you're doing some great things in your schools and and uh, projects, things that you want to share or even promote, uh, this is I think a good place uh, to do that. Feel free to uh, to do that. Um, yeah. I, um, yeah. We have we have like many topics. Uh, there's a lot to talk. There's been happening a lot of things that we can bring to the table. Different articles that came across, different books. But I think we're gonna take it a step by step through the through the year, indeed. And uh, and let's start with the basics. We want to share. We would like to hear from you. What you're doing? What you're gonna do in your classroom? But uh, to begin with, if you allow us, we want to share a little bit what we are going to do in our classrooms, man. Yeah, and I think one of the things is in the sharing, and I was thinking about, like we always do, we kind of think about the technologies maybe that we're going to use, the workflow that we want to create, the communication, the accessibility that we want to create with our students. And so I think when sharing both of our experiences today, it's really not to say that this is the way to do it. It's more just kind of sharing and, and thinking out loud, if you will, and 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 seeing, you know, this is what we're planning on doing. Some of the things that we do perhaps are what we've done in the past. Maybe there's some new things that we're trying, but it's really just to show what our current workflow is. And uh, again, in the hopes that others can provide feedback, maybe suggestions or provide suggestions on ways that we could work more effectively and efficiently. So uh, don't take it as this is the way end all be all. Uh, it's really just kind of a, a way to share uh, our experiences, again, encouraging others to do the same. So, Beatty, why don't we start, if you don't mind, uh, sharing what class that you're, you're considering this uh, semester, maybe uh, the, the workflow that you're looking into for, uh, to get started uh, this week. Yes, Ben, uh, for the audience, we, we both are working here at the Universidad Autónoma de Aguascalientes in, uh, in teacher formation. We have a BA in English language teaching. And this semester, I'll be working in three different subjects and, and as regular on teaching practicum, which is the area in which I've been working for, for the last years. And uh, this semester, I'll, I'll be leading uh, the class along all the teachers because we, we divide the group for certain uh, tasks. And um, I'll be teaching, uh, I, I think, uh, well, I'm, I'm gonna mention the three of them. Uh, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm gonna be teaching something about basic education, which is uh, the analysis of the national educational program, which has been having a lot of changes. And it's right now on, on, on the edge of, in the sense of, uh, in a nice sense, I mean, on the sense of uh, reform and, and changes. So we will be exploring with eight semester students a little bit the different um, uh, the different aspects of the curricula, starting from the constitution and ending up in the language program for basic education. That's one of the subjects I'm teaching, but not the one that I want to focus today. Another subject that I'm teaching, and, and I think it's one of, uh, of the ones that I'm going to focus on, it's um, on teaching uh, worship one, which is the first time students try teaching. They do 15 minute sessions amongst themselves, among their own classmates. And uh, they take, um, it's the first time officially in which they're gonna face a teaching situation as teachers, full responsible teachers of an activity or, or a task itself. So that's the other subject I'm teaching. And the third one is teaching assistantship, which is the follow-up of teaching worship in which um, students are going to tag along a teacher in their classroom in a real group for the whole semester and they're going to be assisting. We focus that subject on reflection so they mostly just support the, the teacher with whatever the teacher needs, the creation of material, supervising, monitoring, helping students throughout the class and they are entitled to teach once a week uh, from uh, 15 to 20 minutes only since it's the first time they face, uh, they face a, a real group with real students in the real world. And uh, and it's just a follow-up uh, of Teaching Worship 1 and Teaching Worship 2. So, uh, Ben, what would you like me to focus on? Teaching Worship 1 or assistantship? What what sounds better for you? <laughs> uh, 
Um, how about the, the, the class where they're starting for the first time to teach in front of a, a group? That might be interesting to bring in that perspective. And, and maybe you can talk uh, either now or later about a class that I think was really interesting that you shared with me, I think yesterday, about the, a couple of your groups interacting, different level of groups interacting with each other. But I'm curious about um, how you're setting up and your thoughts behind this, this one particular group that's going to be facing uh, a real group for the first time, which I would imagine is can be stressful. Uh, yes. Well, the, the first time. Um, sorry. So I, I got mixed in there. One one group is the first time they teach, and, and it's a simulated classes amongst themselves, teaching worship. That's the one in which I, I gather students from different semesters. Uh, uh, indeed, I did that yesterday, and we have a nice, we had a nice experience. And the other one is when they go and face the real group. So, which one would you would you go for first? You want to go? Through, let's go in order, right? Yeah, well, it, th that's fine if you want. Yeah, we can go in order. Yeah, the first one is uh, so teaching workshop. This is uh, students with which are in second semester of the BA. That's one of our, the characteristics of the BA here, the Autonomia de Aguascalientes, that we do have practical subjects since the very beginning. So they come from first semester in which they did classroom observation only with the purpose of analyzing critical incidents, classroom happenings. And now uh, they are start, they are going to start teaching for the first time. Indeed, I, I think uh, Kevin was around here watching right now in Facebook Live. Greetings, Kevin. He's one of the members of this uh, of these uh, teachers, which are information. <clears throat> and the idea in here is that they prepare tasks activities uh, for 15 minutes only. And they teach whatever they prepare to their classmates. And so we simulate a class somehow because they already know the language, but uh, uh, we focus on basics. But I'm talking about really the basics, like standing position, like uh, eye contact, like um, mm, walking around the classroom, gestures, body language, the use of the voice. And then we go through other things like uh, questioning in the classroom, eliciting, and, uh, and, and very, very basic things uh, about their performance. So what they do is they plan a class. They deliver the lesson plan ahead. Uh, we have a, uh, an individual discussion with the students that require it, which at this point is most of them, or I, I could say all of them, require a discussion about their lesson plan and their idea. Uh, I focus these discussions in this moment mostly on the objectives and the expected language of, of uh, the, the target audience for, for this class. Uh, and then they actually teach. Uh, during the teaching, they are observed by peers, by me. Uh, we record videos so they can watch themselves later. And then at the end, we have a feedback session for the teachers that taught uh, during that day in order to have some feedback about uh, the aspects that were effective and the aspects that were non-effective non or semi-effective during the class. I don't know if so far you have a question about it. Yeah, yeah, Pity, I'm curious about you mentioned that you work, one of the things you do in planning with your student teachers before they are, uh, before they begin the class is the expected language uh, or the attended language for, for the group. I don't know if you could speak a little bit more about that or clarify and, and what that looks like from your perspective as the tutor. What kind of conversation you... Right. Uh, yeah, I, the I, class. Couldn't, I couldn't listen to the last thing you said, but um, I, I'm, I'm understanding that you want me to talk about the discussion about the language specter, right? And the planning. Right. Right. Correct. I... I there's always the need to start somewhere, uh, and um, and in this subject, sometimes it's difficult just to start from the air and ask them plan a class and do it, uh, which uh, which is a challenge, right? And and majorly since they are not experienced teachers, uh, they may have a hard time on this. So I start from the idea of determining the topic for the class and the language that is expected. So I talked about four main aspects. Um, there is an article that I use a lot, which talks about the four levels of language in the classroom. And, and, it's, and, and this is talking about the form, the function, 
the context and the topic. That's the way the article comes. I think we discussed this like a year ago or half a year ago here in, in the Teacher Learning Cast. Uh, and that's the way the article handles it. I change a little bit the last two levels because I integrate what they call in this article the topic and the context into one, just as context. And I, but the fourth level that I use, or the fourth aspect mainly that I use uh, for planning, that's why I consider it uh, aspects of of, uh, of the topic for the class. It's the form, which is which I call it the language topic, the the function of the language. Uh, I mean the function of this uh, form that they are going to use. The third one would be the context in which I focus them on the real life situation in which students may use this linguistic feature and uh, preferably that they intend to bring into the classroom as, as a simulation in, in their language classroom. And the fourth aspect, uh, instead of asking them for a general topic, which I consider is already handled in the context itself, I ask them for something that I call the specific language example. I ask them to, uh, clearly state what they expect their students to say if it is speaking, to write if it is writing, to understand from a reading or a listening. Uh, majorly, this specific language example focuses on a practical example. In other words, like let's say if the topic for the day is something related to grammar in simple present, in a certain context, the specific language example would be a sentence already written. So I don't ask them to describe what they're going to say. They, I ask them to actually write an example. So the example would be like, I go to the movies every day. That would be like a, a, like one case of the specific language example. And I encourage them to analyze if during the class they're going to handle variations as the focus of the class. Variations like, is there gonna be a change in the kind of subject you use for that sentence? Or is there gonna be a change in the verb? Is there going to be a change in the, I don't know, in the, in the delivery form, like a question, affirmation, uh, negative statement, or, or, or whatever they consider? Uh, making clear for them that the idea is for them to know what they expect from the classroom, though students, actual language learner students, may bring different kind of sentences and features and add things and, and, and modify different aspects. Uh, it's okay in the classroom as long as the teacher knows for sure what it, what he or she is expecting them to to take as a base form, right? This is pretty much what we work. Yeah, I'm thinking about uh, one of the earlier episodes. I think it might have even been the second or third episode where we talked about the SIAP model, the sheltered yeah. instruction operational protocol model. Uh, we talked a little bit about CLIL. I'm thinking about how teachers input what they say, how can they make it more understandable for English language learners? And, you know, some of these uh, protocols discuss how we as teachers can use like repetition, we can slow down the pace of our voice. Um, we can even go get into talking about recasts, right? So when we hear uh, maybe make mistakes, how do we recast those so we can use positive evidence, negative evidence, where we can, you know, either correct them and make it explicit that maybe they made a mistake, or we can simply model the correct uh, form of the language in real time as we're, as you know as the your, as we're having a discussion with with the students. I'm wondering, and maybe this particular course, because this is a second semester course, right, PD, that you're right. yes. describing. But I'm, I know you're responsible for, for the, the practicum strand, so you're, you have some experience with other levels as well. I'm curious, at what class or at what point do we start talking to uh, teacher trainers about this, the recast, about how we can make maybe alterate, alterate, alternating and, and, and modifying our speech in a way that the you know the language is more comprehensible for our learners at what point does that happen and you know how do students react to that how conscious are that are they and how does that be part of the reflective process when they're working with their tutors throughout the ba 
let me let me just rephrase a little bit because there was a part in which I, I couldn't hear you well because it was kind of choppy. So you're talking about the idea of the language that the teacher uses in the classroom for instruction, right? Yeah, I'm curious about, you know, when we're, we're talking, especially if we're teaching, let's say, a, a level one class, okay. we're going, as English teachers, we're going to be speaking differently, right, than if we we're going to teach a, four, a level four uh, class. And I'm just talking about in terms of the speech, the, the pace in which we speak, how flow, the use of repetition, maybe uh, the use of more hand gestures and facial expressions when maybe the language becomes a barrier, even the use of recasts. I'm, I'm curious about right. your conversations with teacher trainers in terms of their use of not necessarily what they say, but how they right. say it and how conscious they are of that and how that is kind of intertwined into the reflective process with their with their tutors uh, throughout the BA. Well, this is exactly the semester in which we focus on them to develop this kind of skill. It's they have experience on it uh, from first semester in which they did classroom observation. And we do have specific observation topics in which they focus, they go to a classroom, a real classroom, and they focus only precisely on this, on the use of the voice in the classroom. Uh, but we do it in a very general way. That we ask them just to um, describe uh, a couple of features that we mentioned, we just see, uh, uh, I think uh, we see volume, pitch, and projection only, uh, if I recall well. And that's exactly what they focus on during the, during the observation. Now, in this semester, we retake the same topic, but now we spread, uh, we widen a little bit the information they get about this, because we go through different features of the language, of uh, the idea of delivering the language also, I mean, and the, the, the language use in the classroom with, if I recall well, technically it's called um, the meta language in the classroom, the, the language use for a given class, right? So uh, this is the semester in which we go through through the input of this in, in, in a deeper way, a little bit, a little bit deeper than, than the first semester. We go through different features of the language and we ask them to teach the 15 minutes focus on that specific skill at that moment. Indeed, I think it's the first topic we are going to see. Uh, right now, we are gonna start with general teaching. I mean, we're gonna ask them to teach whatever they want, the way they want it, no input about it, so they can start sensing how the dynamic is going to be. And after the first round, we're gonna have the first input, which indeed is that. And we talk about, uh, I, I can resume uh, all of this talk about the use of uh, language in the classroom, which is the use of voice and the use of language in the classroom in an acronym that I always use with them, which is KISS, uh, KISS students, keep it simple for students. And this is something that I use for all levels, for all the students at the BA and for all language learners also, since basic levels till the, till the end. You have to look for a way to keep it simple for students, especially the meta language. Uh, I understand the use of uh, language in the classroom and the meta language in the classroom helps a lot to students' development and, and supports a lot the, the, the practice of the language that the learners need. But uh, I also go for the idea of uh, taking away the interference that you may cause when, uh, when you don't have this sense of what you are saying and how you are saying it to students. And then you start making complex for them at all ages at all levels. So uh, somehow one of the main things I say is that is uh, there are two aspects. The first one is uh, every time the teacher speaks, it takes away an opportunity for students to speak, which is the base for that I ask them to use for classes, in other words, uh, prepare everything before class so that they do the talking. If you need to explain something, prepare in a way so that they actually say it. Now, for sure, there are going to be things that your language learners won't know and would uh, and, and may not be able to answer. Anyhow, you need to be preparing your class to bring material or sources from which students can answer. And that implies the way you speak, what you ask them, how you use your resources. 
so that they can actually give you, let's say, a grammar explanation that they actually don't know at the moment. I'm curious, uh, we can use the same class as an example, but what's the starting point of the lesson plan? I mean, I know that if you look at a lesson plan, you can start from the top with the objectives, right. work it, work your way down. But I'm curious with your experience working as a tutor to uh, teacher trainers, are, are there is there any advantage of coming from various entry points throughout the lesson plan? So, you know, maybe you start with a performance task and then build a course or a lesson plan around that or maybe it's a it's a particular grammatical structure and then you build it around that or maybe it's a, a it's a, a course objective it can be a content objective or, or a language objective uh, hey, can you speak a little bit about that is it, is there a typical way to do it or uh how does that usually come about especially at this level where maybe they're they're uh you know they're still relatively new in the process of trying to organize a lesson plan some sort of planning structure around a live class uh that's a tricky part man because it depends on different aspect, but aspects but mainly on the personal characteristics of of the teacher itself that it's planning uh because you can start whatever you want but the tricky part is that they are new at this, so they may not know the entry points, right? <clears throat> uh, what they normally do at this level, and I've seen this at different levels also in the BA, they start by thinking about an activity, which personally I think that's what causes a lot of issues and situations in their teaching, because they think about bringing an activity into classroom, and sometimes some of them really think about having bringing something fun, exciting, and enthusiastic, a game or something, and that's the entry point they take at this moment, which may be um, not the best entry point to, to, plan, to plan a class, to put it in, 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 in proper words, I would say. Uh, <clears throat> yes, I think it depends on each person when they do have the experience and know the entry points. At this stage, specifically, uh, with the lack of experience, I go for this statement of these four aspects. Think about the uh, language that you, I mean, the form that you want them to practice. Think about, I mean, so the, 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 that would be the language topic, the function, what you want them to do with the language, describing, explaining, complaining, suggesting, questioning, what you want them to do. The next one would be, what is, uh, what, that would be in the, thir the third one, uh, the context you want to add here. Uh, what situation, who is participating in it, and, and uh, the who, the what, the when, uh, the, the WH is about um, the situation you want to bring into the classroom. And the fourth one is the specific language example, which I just mentioned. Now, from having the idea of what each of them are, I ask them to choose any entry point from those four to begin with. So some of them go th uh, through the idea of, oh, I'm going to think about a linguistic feature. Some of them say, no, I want them to uh, describe something. Uh, some others say, no, I would like to talk about uh, the Avengers. And, that, and that's an entry point. And through the course, they start uh, uh, going through, um, uh, through the, uh, going through the lesson plan, but starting from different points, aspects. And by the end of the semester, I expect them to be comfortable with the one they feel better. Now, this semester, I did a little bit of a change because we, we regularly in this course, we just ask them to prepare a class. I explained these four entry points and, and uh, we, when they start selecting what to do from whatever they, from the air sometimes, all right? This semester, I went, I tried to think about the real world and I said, all right, in every single school, they do have a program or they have a book at least. Uh, in any serious school, uh, or at least they have a manual, or at least they have a guide or something. It's not just uh, that it ha like, like it happened to me once. Like I went to a school to ask for a job, and they told me your your group is right there, get in. And I asked them like, uh, is is it for for real? And they were like, yes. And I was like, oh, so is there a program, a book, a level? Well, ask your students. <laughs> that was. 
So imagine getting into a classroom, not even knowing the level of the students, right? But regularly, we do have a program, we do have a book. So what I did this semester is I brought a bunch of teachers' books uh, into the classroom. I gave them books and I told them, this is the way it's supposed to be in the real world. You have a book or a program, which is better yet than the group sometimes, or, or many times the, the programs go along the book, right? So we had something written, prescribed, and I said, from here, imagine you're going to teach one of the aspects in this book. So go through the, go through the uh, index and see if there's anything that catches your attention and imagine that's the point in the semester you are and that's exactly what you have to teach. And by themselves, going through the books, again, I had this variety. Some of them started with the idea of the language. Some of them started with the context. Some of them started with the function. And, but at the end, the, 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 the end of it is, well, not the end, but the, the, the end of the beginning would be align these four ideas. The linguistic top, the language topic, the function, the context, and the specific language example. And from there, whatever they think of, of later, as long as they keep in mind what's the objective, what's the outcome, the expected outcome. It's like thinking a little bit about the evaluation, right, at the end, thinking about what, what are they going to say and how it has to be said by the end of the class, uh, or what am I intending them to do. And then uh, having this as a solid base, they start to have a lot of ideas about activities and about what to do. And then, well, that's what we will work once they start teaching and seeing what the individual characteristic of each student, well, teacher in this case, is. Uh, I start to, to see their, um, their mood, their tone, their character, their personality in the sense that uh, they keep their personality along the class and they polish whatever they need to polish in order to have a successful class. Yeah, you mentioned the textbook, and I, I'm curious. I was thinking about at what point does the textbook become, um, what, helpful? And at what point can a textbook become actually a hindrance or a challenge when we maybe might start to rely a little bit more on the textbook and less on the, the lesson planning? What kind of conversations do you have with your your teacher trainers to in, in terms of course books and how a course book is used within the context of lesson planning i'm i'm getting the idea with these guys specifically that uh this idea of book teaching <laughs> uh it's a vice that is caused somewhere along the way because with this practice i did i never had this talk about uh do exactly the activities from the books or not. I never mentioned them, you have to do the book activities or not. We were just talking about these four elements for the class. None of the students copied an activity from the book, none of them. Everybody just picked the topic, went through the activities and said, oh, this is interesting. I like this listening that is here. So I'm gonna do this topic about this context but they created their own activities. So this, I like that, <laughs> and it made me think like, so this is not the point in which they get this vice. They are naturally looking for their own ways to do things in the classroom, focusing on the objective, which is, which is what I'm trying to lead them to. Focus on the objective, the outcome, the objective, the outcome, and, uh, and I'm, I'm waiting to start seeing the classes they're going to teach. We're going to start at this uh, Tuesday with them. But yes, it was a good thing. I think it was a good thing that they act, none of them focus on following the book. So if it comes to having this talk uh, uh, about what you say, uh, the book interfering or not, yeah, my idea is that uh, in this case, the idea of bringing the book was just to have a prescribed solid things like we normally do have in a classroom. Uh, but yes, the idea was totally, you have to create your own way in that sense. Uh, and not because it's your way, it, it, because it's supposed that your way matches your students' way. Right. Very good. All right. 
Um, anything else, uh, Piri, you want to share well, with? Uh, maybe next time we can talk about the 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 other class, which is assistantship, and we had a, a, a it's a follow up, and it's also interesting what's going to happen there. So we may talk about that next time. I just want to finish with the idea of the session we had yesterday. I invited, indeed, I invited these guys that are going to assistantship for the first time to assist a real teacher, and they already passed teaching workshop. So I invited them to the teaching workshop session to talk with the students about their experience with me in teaching workshop. And we spent uh, like uh, 40 minutes, like half an hour, 40 minutes in groups. I had four groups and I have four students from the upper semester uh, working with the teaching workshop uh, guys, just talking about whatever they wanted in, rela in relation to, to the course and uh i heard a lot of interesting things i think this can be another huge talk to talk about that session i heard a lot of interesting things and i got comments immediate comments from students in which they were really glad that we had that session because they they I, it seems to me not sure because i haven't talked that deep with them this was just yesterday we're going to have a session next tuesday uh, it seems to me that for some of them, they have a totally different scenario about the course after talking to these guys from the upper semester. So bottom up, I just bring it up because uh, I think it was a great practice. And what I told them at the end is that that's the idea of teaching, bringing uh, a more experienced person to help you through your way. Uh, the teacher in the classroom is no other uh, another thing than a, 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 a more experienced user of the language that is helping you a little bit. So it was the same thing that happened here. We had people with a little bit more, one semester, two semesters with more experience than, than these guys. And it was amazing what happened there. So we can discuss about that next week because I would like to hear what you got to say about your semester, Ben. No, and uh, yeah, th and I definitely look forward to hearing that. When you told me, talked when we talked about it on, I guess, yesterday, uh, is it, I thought definitely this needs to be something that we need to share because I think anytime that we can take advantage of our learners interacting with other uh, level uh, learners, I think that's always a good thing. It's not always possible, obviously, because they have each has their, has their their schedules, but definitely look forward to hearing that. Um, I want to talk a little bit about what I'm thinking about for this semester, and I'm going to go share my screen. Petey, feel free to jump in at any time. I'm going to kind of ramble on, so just just uh, jump in anytime uh, you wish. So okay. just let me know if you can see my screen. I have a screenshot here of thesis seminar. Are you able to see my screen? No, it's still you on the on the camera. All right. So let me try this again here. Yeah, no. having some, some technical difficulties here. Let me, uh, I'm going to refresh, uh, PD, so I may jump out just for one okay. second. All right, in the meantime, I remind everybody on Facebook and also in this transmission that uh, we encourage you to participate with us. There are different ways to do so. Get to Teacher Learning Cast to make comments. I'm also doing a Facebook transmission in live. And uh, and you can also tag along the Hangout if you want to, for as long as we have Hangouts with us. Ben, you're back. But it's still you. All right. right? Yeah, it looks like I'm, I'm not able to share my screen. So um, I'll just talk about what I'm planning on doing. Uh, this semester, uh, I'm teaching a thesis seminar course, which is a research course. It's kind of a capstone uh, research project that uh, students in our BA program are uh, asked to do. So they actually conduct research based on some topic related to applied linguistics, right? So it can be related to any of the four skills, could be related to grammar, uh, vocabulary, pronunciation, any uh, anything related to social linguistics, psycholinguistics, basically any of the courses in the linguistic strand also that is of interest to them, they are able to conduct their own research. Typically, they will um, focus on a problem. We always ask them <clears throat> the first week of class to really concentrate on the problem. They want uh, research, a problem maybe they've experienced as either a teacher or as a, as a learner. 
but the 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 point here is to help guide them through the process of developing a literature review then conducting a research by developing a method section where they collect data and then they will share their findings or results through the creation of a results and discussion section and at the end of the semester they will participate in oral defense where they'll give a presentation typically 20 minutes they will uh, share their findings share their study in front of three examiners which will then lead to a 10 minute question and answer so they'll be able to actually then provide a defense and explanation uh, and answer any of the questions that they have about their research so the way that we have set up this course is it's a 16 week course and it's divided into uh, weekly tutoring sessions a one-on-one -on -one tutoring session so we will uh, we have tutors for example in this semester we have i think 42 or 43 students enrolled we have uh, there are two tutors and uh, we, so we'll have approximately 20 to 21 maybe 22 uh, students who we will schedule 30 minute sessions each week one-on-one -on -one, uh, to help them through the process so this semester i've taught this course uh, many times and um, this particular semester i'm going to use google classroom and what i like to do is i, I like to provide different uh, ways that students can interact with the content so that if uh, since we don't have a lot of time face to face that they have a source that they could go to to see and you know try to have access to the different topics that uh, that are involved in throughout the course so unfortunately i can't show you this um but is, is it that is it a screenshot you can, if you want to send it through facebook inbox i can uh share my screen in there uh oh, okay all right let me let me do that let me uh all right can i just sh share you the link then yeah okay. right right Hey, I just uh, uploaded the link there, Pete. If you want to share your screen, that might—that's a good idea. We can try that. Okay. Oh, I don't have access. It says like class not found in the link. Oh, oh, here. Let me give you access. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and that is a, a something to. Uh, consider that the Google Classroom is a closed class and that's something I wanted to talk about. I'm going to type in the the code here real quick. Uh, lost it here. If you have a way to do a screenshot, maybe we can share that if you send it. Okay, here's the, uh, the code there, Pete. If you want to just go ahead and go in and let me see if I can do that. Uh, it, it leads me directly to class not found. It doesn't allow me. It, it is not prompting me for a code or anything. I think it's. Uh, it says double check your link. All right. Okay. Let me. Go ahead. All right. Well, um, yeah. So it is a closed class. So the the students will have access to the content via a class code, and they're able then to go in to a section that's divided into different topics. So each topic is a week. So I break down all the content by week so that they're uh, clear on what the focus is for each week. I try to set separate uh, objectives for each week to kind of break it down uh, the process as much as possible. And uh, students are also asked to complete a weekly journal. So so they are able to, it's, it's a relatively short text, but it allows me to find out what challenges they're facing for that particular week and also uh, what they need from me as their tutor. So things that they would like to discuss their next tutoring session, they can include that in their weekly journal and allows me then to uh, better prepare for our conversation and really try to get the most out of our weekly uh, tutoring sessions. I think it's really important, I try to stress uh, the importance of having students bring in their questions and, and try to make uh, some some uh, some progress each week so that the, we have things to that we can work out uh, during our face-to-face -face sessions. Right. So the weekly journal allows for that to happen. It, it gets them into this uh, cycle of reflection and uh, 
you know, communicating to me basically what how they're they're coming along. I found that this class more than probably any other class because we just don't have the face to face time. Uh, yeah. It's really important to have this communication and this accessibility uh, between the teacher and student because otherwise, when br communication breaks down, that's usually where th things go south and, and students then right. start to get behind. And in this particular class, you get behind, it's really difficult to, to, to catch up just because there's just a lot, lot to it. There's a lot uh, throughout the process. So there's really no room for taking a week off really and without really having to work hard to catch up uh, the next the next week. So and I do have a question there. Uh, yeah. and, and I think it's uh, kind of uh, the basics for, for certain aspects. How much do you, in your experience in this subject, in the years you've been teaching it, uh, do you think or, or how much is the awareness students have about the importance of the research. I mean, they they do it. I have experience. They come to me and asking things, and they know it's they have to do a lot of things, and and it's important for them to do them because it's part of the subject. But my point is, how much of um, how how they see the relevance of having a, of having some results about the research they carry out. Yeah, there's two things I, two ways I would like to answer that question. And the first is to talk about a course, an earlier course that all students have to take called Applied Linguistics. And this is a six semester class. Uh, so like a year ago, they, they took uh, an Applied Linguistics course, which part of that course requires them to do an action research project. Okay. And so this is their first taste, really, if you will, of doing research it's it's uh it's light it's a small research project but it's really focused on their own practice so in research they will find a group that they are teaching whether it's within their practicum strand or, or practicum group that they have or it could be in some cases some students are teaching already it could be a course that they're taking but the key to their action research project is that they are focusing and collecting data and analyzing data on their own practice with their own students, their own groups, their own context, obviously focusing on a problem that relates to them. So again, they have had this course, they've had this experience, and, and this kind of leads into their, uh, their project, now eighth semester project for thesis seminar. It's important to mention in seventh semester, students take an academic writing course where they have to complete a literature review. So what we try to do in the BA is try to link their action research project that they do in applied linguistics in sixth semester. In seventh semester, take that same problem or topic and build a, some theoretical framework by writing a literature review. And then in eighth semester, then continue that same idea and build a more a broad research project that, that they now focus on when they want to research other teachers. That's the main distinction between thesis seminar in eighth semester and applied linguistics, okay. the, uh, the applied research in uh, sixth semester is now in eighth semester, they need to focus on someone else. So they've had that experience of doing research on their own practice and now they're going to be having some experiences researching other people. But there's a common thread between both experiences, and that is it needs to be a problem that they can relate to, that they can that they faced, again, either as a teacher or as a as a student. We spend the first week, and a lot of times in reality, more than that, several weeks, really um, helping students be able to articulate a very clear and concise problem that they can that they can relate to because I think that really is at the heart of any research. This is the significance. Right. This is why they're doing it in the, in the first place. I always give the example with my students when they're presenting their presentation at the end, you know, we've had cases where some students are, they do well presenting the, the PowerPoint's wonderful. They speak very well. They deliver it uh, in a really good way. But at the end of it, some of the examiners might ask EK, 
about a K. What's the point? What is the purpose of this? You know, what where do you want what do you want to do with this? And I think that problem uh, when doing research is really it boils down to being able to relate to a problem. So I think to answer your question, if students can find the problem and connect the dots, see oh. that there is a benefit of doing research. Um, and and collecting the data and and really learning more about a problem. Maybe they don't find the whole solution to a particular problem, but if they at least better understand the problem, they at least maybe know now how to articulate the problem and maybe work towards a, a solution. I think that they're more likely to see the relevance of you know of doing research and and not have research be so separate and disconnected from the reality because that's the old argument right is oh the research is one thing and teaching practice is something else right and there's no room for you know research and it you know the researchers are out of touch and and etc and i think this is one step in in addressing that issue which i'm not saying that it's not an issue it, it can it can be but with our teachers we really want them to see the benefit of being able to uh, to conduct research, and we look at it as actually, you know, uh, an opportunity for them to generate and celebrate really what they've learned throughout the BA, and 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 be able to formalize what they have uh, learned or the highlights of what they've learned into something that's hopefully relevant and meaningful for them. So this course is really uh, designed to really facilitate that process and help them make decisions that evolve around their own personal interest, not so much us saying, okay, you need to research this and this and this, but to give them a lot of choice and then help them uh, facilitate making the best choices for their project. Right. Do they get to to make some interventions or, or, or try outs about something that they want to try in classroom or is this mainly focused on collecting and analyzing data? It's mainly focused on our students uh, researching other teachers. Now, you mentioned intervention. Yeah. And depending on the situation, right, if teachers are, 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 go are doing what, the, what our students, our researchers are needing, and then they don't have to do an intervention. But sometimes it's necessary if teachers, if, if it's uh, depending on what they're researching, Okay. They may have intervention where they're working with the teacher and 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 asking them and helping them. In some cases, uh, maybe do a, a new teaching practice or use a, a material or a technology that maybe they haven't used before. Um, then there's an intervention, but there's really not uh, an intervention, and it's not really part of the co course objectives to necessarily uh, have them do this in their own class. Of course, they can on their own. And they're encouraged to, you know, try new things, and maybe the knowledge that they gain from this research they can use in their own classroom. But it's not, it's not part of the the research, and it's not part of the class um, objectives. And so I understand if, if some of them get to do some sort of intervention, it's for the sake of uh, polishing the gather information. Correct, because let's say that a student wants to. Um, research WhatsApp, and uh, he or she wants to see how teachers All right. facilitate communicative uh, competencies using WhatsApp in the classroom. Well, let's let's say that maybe the the student now the researcher is looking for teachers who are using WhatsApp in this in this fashion, and let's say that he or she is not able to find a teacher. Well, right. then, then we might ask them to do an intervention, and it's 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 a very you know very systematic way of going about doing an intervention. But it is an option where students, our researchers, can then go in and and work with their participants, their teachers, and help them maybe either teach them or show them how or suggest to them how they could use WhatsApp, and then you know maybe the teacher would be using WhatsApp for the first time so that our student researchers then could conduct their research. So that's what I mean by if, you know, teachers aren't already doing it, there there's always an, a, a possibility of doing uh, an intervention. But again, it just depends on the, the, the type of research that they're doing. 
Oh, uh, what do you think is the point at which they find? Uh, I mean, I know the the hard part. The hard part most of the time is the beginning, right? Uh, to select a topic and to polish the topic, but but once you pass that, okay, because I know it's a hard time always. Is there another point along the the process in which they get stuck regularly, are frustrated or anxious because something is not uh, coming to an end, or I don't know. I mean, I understand the beginning is always it's always the hard part, right? Is it in this case? I mean, yeah, it's uh, that's a good question, and there there are many answers. It really just depends. Like I can give you examples of every part of the process where some students might have problems for different reasons. But, sure. you know, I think the literature review, generally speaking, is one of the, the biggest challenges. In fact, that's why we have a dedicated course uh, in the semester dedicated just to developing a lit review with the idea that they can use, if not, you know, the exact same literature review, they can use the, the, the bulk of that same literature review in their research project in eighth semester. Um, but it's, it's just a, it's all, it's for, it's a challenge to be able to organize, you know, thoughts around a literature, you know, be able to do, uh, research, read up on articles and analyze and synthesize information and organize it in such a way that's really aligned with a research set of research questions. You know, it's one thing to write a theoretical piece and not have to think about the actual research, but they're asked to create a th theoretical base and align it with research. And, and so that's a, a, an additional challenge that many students face. So that's why we have a whole course, half of the course in academic writing is designed for building a th uh, literature review. And then we also have four weeks dedicated in this course in eighth semester in thesis seminar, where they also can uh, finalize their lit literature review and align it, thinking in terms of research questions and uh, making sure at the end of the day that when they conduct their research that they have a good theoretical base. The last thing we want our students to, to have is a, a theory that talks about one thing and they research something else. Yeah. So we, we talk a lot about you know, having research questions and, and thinking in terms of our theory in terms of those research questions so that they, they, have, they have that proper guidance to create uh, alignment between the research and the theory. How about you How as about a tutor? tutor? I mean, uh, I know you're a well-organized person and I advantage from technology and um, and you have your way of working with the students in which uh, I can tell uh, there's always a line to follow or different lines to follow, but you can handle them very well. But but still, is there a moment in which you as a tutor get like maybe anxious or frustrated or kind of stuck, or maybe that uh, a point in which it's not that hard feeling, but still it's a moment in which you are kind of lo not lost, but how, how to put it in it? Like, um, uh, like challenging maybe. Yeah, exactly. A moment in which you say, this is something that I need to find the way around and I still don't get it. Or is there a moment along the semester in which this happened regularly or? Yeah, that's a good question. And this is where I hope, uh, all of my students that are taking a thesis seminar are listening to to this, and I might even I might even clip my answer here and upload it to Google Classroom. But here it goes. Here's my answer. Um, as I tell my students, it's important not to get behind, and we have designated dates. We actually give them a schedule, week by week schedule, as to what we're doing each week and due dates for each part of of this paper. So for example, the literature reviews due, we have four weeks and it's due, I think March 1st or something if memory serves, but we have four weeks. So we have kind of a, uh, yeah, we have a due date for the, the literature review. We've got three weeks to design material, uh, design elements. We have three weeks to collect the data and we have two weeks if we don't count the break because we have two weeks that we're out of class. So I'm not counting those two weeks, but we have two weeks, two to three weeks to finish the res uh, results and discussion 
section. So ideally, the best scenario is that students are each week making progress and that allows me, because we're using Google Docs, we haven't really talked much about the technology here, but, but basically we share documents using Google Docs, so that allows me to go into each of the documents and I can leave feedback. We also share all the documents with the whole group, so everybody can see everybody else's document and they can also see the feedback that I give them. I, I jokingly tell them I, uh, that, you know, feel free to, you know, if you feel that I'm being mean to you and, and the uh, feedback that I provide, just check your classmates because I'm probably being mean to them also. So mm -hmm. I jokingly tell them that because I do want them to see the type of feedback that I give their classmates because I think that they can learn from that. So I use this as a way to work as transparently as possible, not only the way that I communicate with them and provide feedback, but also how they can share and look and compare, really. I want them to compare their work with the, com uh, uh, with the work of their classmates. And so the idea here is if they provide me work throughout uh, each week, I can give them better feedback. Okay. And of course, this is a little bit less stressful for me if you want to put it and you know look at it from my perspective as the teacher but I, I more importantly want to bring it up from the perspective of the student I can provide better feedback throughout the course if they give me something every week instead of wait for it they don't right. do anything until the end of the fourth week and then they give me the whole thesis or yeah the whole literature review I should say and then I have to review the whole literature review and, and I don't mind doing that, but I, I would prefer feedback throughout the week. And again, I know that they're, they're going to get better feedback from me, and the learning process in and of itself is going to be much better for them if, it, if they do it that way, instead of just waiting to the last minute and giving me the whole thing uh, at once. And so for me, I think that's, that's the thing. That's maybe the... The challenge of this course, or maybe it's a little bit more difficult to try to keep up with it every, every week, but but it really is important to try to do that. And I know things come up, you know, and there's a lot of cases where, you know, uh, you know, some things are outside the hands of students, like if they're trying to observe, and you know, the classes get canceled at the particular school that they're uh, that they're uh, where they're working. I know things happen like that, but um, it, it's really just trying to be in close communication with the tutor and trying to provide as much uh, of uh, their work each week in order for me to give them timely feedback on an ongoing and consistent basis. All right, man. Uh, very interesting. Uh, is there is there a point in which they interact amongst them interact amongst themselves more than all the time during the semester? You know, I, I as much as I try to set it up that way, I don't make it necessarily a requirement. Okay. So I I just spend most of my time encouraging them to do that, uh, leaving it as an option. You know, I put a lot of stuff online, and I know sometimes some of my students feel burdened. They feel like it's a lot of information. But I always tell them that most of the information, other than the, the assignments, of course, is there if you want to access it. You know, if it's too much or if you don't need it or don't want it, okay. then okay. that's fine, right? A lot, most of it's not even a requirement. And so I do it because I want to bombard them with information, but I, I want them to have options and make, have them make the best decisions for themselves as to how they want to interact and, and how they need to an, interact with the content. And so my job, I feel, is to try to facilitate that process and, you know, anytime they feel bogged down in thinking that this is just too much information, right. then we step back and say, okay, just maybe you only look at this or maybe you even need to refer to it or maybe you can work it a different way. And right. usually that works, uh, you know, usually that, uh, that helps. So, so the point of using the technology is just to provide options uh, for the students and try to provide a good outline, a good clear path as to how they can best get through the, the learning process.
Right. Uh, really interesting because I'm looking at a picture in here that you're working with eight semester students with more experience, which are already working. They have their own issues going on and they may need uh, their own pace and time to, to be by themselves. And as you said, to, to select when to jump in with another or not. In my case, I'm working with second semester students and uh, and I felt the need this this semester to formalize a little bit more the collective work. Though they are planning individually, though we always have these channels open, like sharing folders, you can explore others lesson plan, you can plan together, you can come to the office and plan with me. Uh, the feedback sessions are all together and we discuss in there. Uh, and who, whomever wants to jump in can jump in and, and, and we can have a discussion about whatever they want about the classes they're teaching. But this semester, I, I wanted to look for a way, uh, which may not be the best way, but I, I did it through formats, some formats to fill out, uh, just to guarantee that they're actually thinking about participating or, or, or collaborating with others. Uh, it may not be the best way to do it, but I think that's that's a way I am intending to see how it works this semester. And, and I call it like formalizing the collaborative work somehow so that at least, they, and, and I think it's important at this level, second semester, so they experience it well. And uh, 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 as they go and start developing their own teaching skills and their own, uh, 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 they, their own teacher's identity, they may choose to keep on working that way or going a little bit more individual, but at least I want them to try to do it that way. Uh, point, PD, and, I, and one I think that uh, we can kind of summarize here our discussions today is when we're sharing this with all of you, our, all of our listeners, our teachers out there, think about to what degree your, the flexibility that you can provide your students. It's going to depend on the level of the students. It's going to depend on your own teaching preference and the profiles of the students, even perhaps the school system and the curriculum that you're uh, that you may have to follow. But try to think about to what degree, what types of decisions can students make on their own, and at what point uh, will they need some guidance and maybe even more directives, depending on the situation and trying to find that balance, trying to find that balance of where students can make decisions on their own and 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 where maybe the, the teacher, the educator, instructor needs to uh, be more uh, directive in uh, in making those decisions. And it, it's 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 just gonna be a, a good balance between those two and it's gonna depend on, on, on the context. But I think that um, hopefully today uh, our sharing of our experiences will encourage you to do the same we would love to hear from you and and hear what um what choices you're making with technology or the or the plan on be the, your students maybe lesson planning how you're planning on uh creating those educative experiences for your students we really would like to hear from you if you ever want to be part of the broadcast let us know reach out to us on facebook leave us in contact us directly, individually, uh, publicly. Uh, we'll respond and get back to you, and uh, we're happy to invite you on uh, on the broadcast. Yes, Ben, and sometimes uh, for some of us may sound too fancy or too technical when we discuss things which we naturally handle, like words like talking about collective, collective work, the performance tasks. Uh, when we talk about research, when we mention things about um, this uh, interactional exchange and all that, and it may sound, uh, I may not, uh, I don't want to, to, to sound like uh, uh, denigrating or offensive in that sense, when I say fancy or, or technical in that way. But what I mean is that it's all about communication, something that you already said a while ago. It's just about putting it out, having your students talk to each other, talk to your students, talk to your classmates. Talk to your teacher, peers in the schools, talk, talk to everybody. And I think that's the basics for this research, for this collaborative work, for this performance task, and everything in which you want the students to develop something new and go through the flow. Let us know if you want to, to, to be part of the broadcast, if there's some experience that you are happy with, or even a challenge that you face that you want to share with others. Uh, this, I think, is a place that you can do that. 
Again, feel free to reach out to us on Facebook and I'd be more than happy to, to make that happen. Right, and I want to thank everybody that joined today uh, after a month and a half of not doing the cast uh, and, and we still have you around coming in and going uh, for several times. I want to thank Said Fernandez, Ricardo Vasquez, Elsa Collazo, Carla, uh, Beli Herrera, America, Sandra Reyes, uh, Eddie Valadez, Luis McPhail and Danny Llama, Checo Duran, Penelope Lopez, Gloria Acevedo, Paco Serna, Karen Rangel, Andres Perales, Lucero, Carol Rodriguez, uh, and uh, many others that came along and waved and went. Thank you very much for joining us. We'll keep on trying to do this on a regular basis after this vacation. And uh, Ben, anything else? Nope. Uh, Petey, thanks a lot. It's great to be back and uh, doing the broadcast again. Enjoyed it as always. And again, I want to thank all of our listeners for tuning in, whether you caught the live broadcast or caught, uh, caught the recording. Thanks again, and we'll see everyone in the next broadcast. Yeah, keep on learning.